Inside this room, there are countless people with a secret musical ability. You might be one of them. I say secret because they don't even realize they have it. And if they've never tried to learn a musical instrument, then any musical potential is just laying dormant. To be fair, there's probably just as many people here without this special musical ability who still have pursued musical training and after years and years of it have reached a level of proficiency, but perhaps without the musical intuition or ease that they've seen in those around them. So what is this secret mu musical ability? It's the music inside your head. Now, I'm not talking about how frequently you get songs stuck in your head. <laughs> I'm sure we've all experienced that. Uh, and in fact, people that get a lot of songs stuck in their head aren't necessarily good at this either. I'm talking about the deliberate bringing to mind of a piece of music. That is your musical imagery ability. And if I ask you all right now, imagine the song Happy Birthday. Go on. No, no, you're singing it. You've got to imagine. <laughs> Silence, please. No. So imagine the song. Right. For some people, I mean, it was for us because you were all singing it, it's as vivid, uh, vivid as actual sound. You would be on the higher end of the spectrum. For others, it's a vague sense of a song. They can't really hear it that clearly in their mind. And they would be on the lower end of the spectrum. So I've done my whole PhD on this topic of musical imagery. And it wasn't until about halfway through that I even discovered this idea that it was linked to a secret musical ability. But I vividly remember the day I discovered this idea. I'd just finished presenting the results of my first few studies to a research group in the UK. This was my first big trip. I was a little bit nervous. It had gone OK. I'd got through it all. And then afterwards, one of the researchers, the professor there, s said, this is really exciting work. It really speaks to Gordon's theory of audiation. And he must have seen that blank look on my face. <laughs> and then he followed it up with, you have heard of Gordon's theory of audiation, haven't you? In which case, I just started spiralling downwards. You know when your stomach just hits the floor? And I was like, who is Gordon? What is audiation? And why have I never heard of this before? Lucky for me, the, um, the researcher was actually one of those kind um, scientists who actually just wants to see science progress and see students succeed. So he spent some time explaining these theories to me. And instead of coming away deflated, I actually came away really energised and wanting to learn more. You see, Evian Gordon was a music education researcher, and he didn't like the term musical imagery. He used the term audiation to describe hearing music in the mind. And he said that audiation is to music what thought is to language. Isn't that neat? Audiation, the ability to hear music in the mind, is to music what thought is to language. But even more than that, Gordon saw that audiation was the fundamental skill needed for a child to develop musical from, um, from a beginner to become a musician. It was the measure of musical aptitude. And so he tested hundreds of preschoolers and school kids on these tests of audiation. And he found that half of those in the top 20% had never had any formal music training outside the general classroom. But the problem with his tests of audiation is that they didn't just require the ability to imagine music. They needed um, some longer-term memory systems to come into play because people were hearing melodies and they had to hold them in their mind and compare them to other melodies. And a lot of the tasks were um, quite complex. And other musical imagery tasks that have been used to discover what's going on um, as people imagine music, they've either been too easy for some people that you didn't even need to imagine music to do them, or they're too hard, like mentally reversing melodies. There's nothing been in between. And so, um, and a lot of the tasks too required memory for certain melodies that um, some nursery rhymes you might be familiar with, but that's not going to be universal. And so for my task, I designed um, in, with this in mind, a task that needed the basic building block of music which in Western music is the major scale. Now, if you have never done any musical training at all, I am confident that you know the major scale, and I'm about to prove it to you. We're all going to sing it together. But first, I need you all to stand up.
because everybody sings better when they stand up. It's, it's a proof. OK, and I'm just going to pick the random scale that we're going with. So we're going to start with la. Everyone sing that? La. Oh, that's pretty good. OK, we're going to go up the scale. Ready? La, 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 la. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yay, give you the hell's clap. OK. But you were so good at singing that scale, you don't even have to go all the way up. You could just go up and down, I think. Single steps, if I just point. So let's start at that same basic building spot. La, you sing that? La, 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 I feel like a choir director. OK, you can sit down. You can sit down. So this final test we're going to do is you don't have to sing. So some people are going, whew. This time, I just want you to imagine the sound in your head. I'll start you off with a few of the steps, and then I'm going to stop singing too. And we're all just going to imagine some steps together. And when I stop pointing, just hold that note in your mind. Are you ready? La, 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 la. La. Is that the note you were imagining? Hands up for yes. Hands up for no. Hands up for I have no idea. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the answer should have been yes. Um, so what you have just done is a literal hand wavy version of the pitch imagery arrow task. Normally, the arrows are on a screen, and you hear piano tones. And um, hundreds of people have done this task now, and it has been linked to musical training. People with more musical training do perform better at the task, as do people that rate on questionnaires that they have more vivid um, auditory imagery. They can hear. Um, clearly the sound of rain falling on the roof. Uh, and they can change sounds easily in their minds. It's all been, also been linked to being able to sing in tune or tap in time to music and a number of different um, memory tasks. But if we're going to use this task to determine if musical imagery really is a secret musical ability that predicts future music achievement, that's going to take time. That's going to take a study where we test people at the beginning and then track them over their musical development to see whether the amount that they started off with really did predict their future achievement. Lucky for us, such a study is already underway in the UK and in Europe, where they're tracking high schoolers across seven years. Wouldn't it be great to see a similar sort of study happening right here in Australia? Maybe with adults who are picking up an instrument for the first time, or in training bands where they get their flutes and clarinets out and learning together at eight and nine years old. But I was thinking, if these ideas have been so influential in musical imagery, uh, in music education literature, then surely music educators would be trying to teach this to their students. Um, but it actually appears that it hasn't been well taken up. But there is evidence, at least anecdotally, that children can learn to imagine music. In her uh, memoir, Piano Lessons, Anna Goldsworthy, an award-winning uh, Australian pianist and author and playwright, has ri written about her teacher, Mrs Sivan, who placed a real emphasis on imagining each note before it was played. And she quotes, It was not enough to play each part, to feel it in my hands. I had to sing it in my head, follow its contour, tell its story. Then, when I put the parts together, by a sudden miracle, I could hear them all at once. It was as though I had three minds and three sets of ears operating in parallel. The first time this happened, I turned to her astonished. My consciousness had expanded. I could feel air rushing into unused parts of my mind. Is that really what's going on in the brain as people imagine music? It's probably no surprise for you to find out that musicians' brains and non-musicians' brains are different, particularly in the auditory regions that process sound. But did you know that even in the motor regions, when people are completely still and just listening to music, the brains of musicians process sound differently? In a recent study, they had guitarists, beatboxers, and non-musicians listen to unfamiliar music of guitar music or beatbox music. And what they found was that for guitarists, 
As they heard the music, the guitar music, and only the guitar music, they had greater motor activation in the parts of the brain that control their hands needed for guitar. Um, as opposed to the beatboxers, who actually showed greater motor region activation for the parts that control their voice box, but only for the beatbox music. But this isn't just for trained musicians. In another study, there was uh, participants brought in, these were non-musicians, and they listened while they remained still to 24 minutes of a Tibetan singing bowl being gonged by a wooden mallet. They then played it themselves for 30 minutes and then listened again for 24 minutes. And when they compared the brain activity between the pre and the post playing of the instrument, they found there was greater connection between the parts of the brain that control the right hand, that is the left motor area, and the auditory regions. What these studies tell us is that when we ourselves hear a sound that we know how to produce, it's as if our motor regions are running a, a visualization or a representation of the action required to make that sound, a simulation. And so uh, even, though it's even though we're being completely still, as we hear sounds that we know how to produce, our motor region is doing the action. And the reason it's doing that is because it helps us to then be able to predict what it is we're about to hear. It helps us know we're going to hear something now and now, and now. And so, I was interested in, in my study, what happens in the brain as people imagine music. I looked at the same motor and auditory regions uh, as the Tibetan singing bowl study, and this is just a human brain that's been sliced out to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And what I found was these regions, even when we're not moving, but also not even hearing anything, and it's all just going on in our heads, as people were doing that task, the motor and the auditory regions were coordinating together to bring about that subjective experience. And even more, and this is probably the most exciting finding of my PhD, I found that when people who were good, the better someone was at imagining music, the more they showed information flow from the motor regions to the auditory regions as they listened to sound. But not just heard sound, but actually in the few hundred milliseconds before they anticipated hearing the sound. So these ideas, I hope, have had the power to inspire you. Inspire you when you get home tonight to pick up that um, dusty guitar or ukulele that's sitting in the corner, Maybe sit down at the piano, or even just sing a little louder when you're streaming your music. Especially if you've just discovered that you actually have this secret musical ability, maybe it's time to unlock that potential. And if you are already learning a musical instrument, keep going. Know that every time you practice, your brain is actually changing. And next time you do sit down to practice, try that advice from Mrs. Sivan. Sing it in your head. Follow its contour. Tell its story. Thank you.